fan list. I don't know if it's the one. So I'll just go ahead and introduce the next speaker. Thank you, Daniel, for the talk. That was so informative. Thank you so much. Our next speaker is Niveta Maran. I hope I got that right. <laughs> She's also a part of us. She's one of the organizers at the Women Tech Maker Berlin. She's a software engineer at Delivery Eru, and she has almost five years experience in tech. She's very passionate by people and tech. And before she moved to Berlin, she was running a GDG chapter at, um, in India. And recently she moved to Berlin. That's why she joined us in the Women Technica Berlin. Um, she has delivered multiple technical topics. She's actually a speaker. She speaks at events and she speaks on technologies, front-end technologies, technical stuff. She strives for diversity. Obviously, that's why she's part of the Women Tech Maker. And she's actively involved in local women in tech communities. Today, she'll be sharing with us about how to get abroad job opportunities without any master's degree. Uh, join me to welcome Neveta to the floor. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. OK, you have the mic. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you so welcome. much. So before I start my talk, uh, like uh, you guys are able to hear me, right? Yes, we can hear you. OK, cool. OK, let me share my screen. So I hope you guys are able to see my presentation. Okay. Yeah. Yes, we can see it. Okay. So uh, thank you, Bukolo, actually, uh, for that wonderful introduction. So uh, like, let's get started. So first of all, I want to thank each and every one of you who are who have joined the event today, uh, because it's been a really uh, uh, like very bad situation all around the world and I know it's very very difficult uh, you know uh, join on a Saturday and you girls are like really special uh, so before uh, starting with the talk uh, uh, like as Nicola mentioned uh, like these are some of the facts about me uh, but one fact I really wanted to stress upon is like I just moved to Berlin like a month back and I'm really looking forward to make a lot of new friends over here so feel free to ping me on LinkedIn I'll, uh, and we can grab a coffee and have a good conversation. So uh, this today's talk is going to be really a very short one. Uh, it's basically about uh, the story of how I got a job uh, overseas outside of India without any master's degree. And uh, I just uh, made it a very uh, short and crisp and uh, just totally uh, uh, split the section into three different parts, like why I chose the decision and how I went about it. And also what are the different tips and tricks I learned along the way. The first one being like why uh so basically like back in india i was uh, living a very comfortable life uh a good job and also uh, like i had my parents like making me good food three times a day it was a very comfortable life but uh like i realized this pandemic made me realize that i i am an independent woman i really wanted to explore the world and uh, especially this pandemic realized that uh like it's a uh, life is really crazy and it's very short you don't have to you know you have to take few risks in your life you know just to explore and learn about more about yourself and uh unfun fact i don't even know cooking so it was a crazy decision and uh like after being here for almost a month i would say it was one of the best decision i have ever taken because i met a lot of different people from different backgrounds i learned a lot about myself and also i started cooking which was like a nightmare before for me so I decided, yeah, so I'm going to find a job outside India, just more abroad. So I was thinking, what are the different options that's available to me, right? So that's when I was uh, just putting out what are the different countries I can apply for and see what works for me. The first, obviously, US, like a dream destination for a lot of people. Uh, but the one thing about US is like you can get a job easily there, uh, maybe after doing a master's degree which cost a lot of money. And I honestly believe that to work in a, a software engineer job, you don't really need a undergrad degree uh, to be frank, but like everything is available online, right? So 
like I ruled out the US option. And then next came the Canada. So even for Canada, similar to US, we need a PR, uh, you know, to go uh, find a job and work there. And the next two options were Australia and Germany. And I did a little research about them and uh, realized that Germany offers me a lot more of what I want, like, you know, work-life balance, a diverse culture and a good tech scene. So I stuck with uh, Germany. So after deciding the uh, country, uh, like I was thinking, how can I go about it? Like, how can I get a job in uh, Germany? So that's when I came, uh, like I came the powerful use of LinkedIn. So I, uh, I promise you, I just used LinkedIn to get a job outside of India, nothing else. And I can share you what are the tips and tricks I used uh, with LinkedIn to get that uh, dream job outside of uh, India without any master's degree. So yeah, I think I uh, hope uh, like everyone has a LinkedIn profile over here and you guys would, uh, would have, uh, you know, uh, had a senior section jobs under uh, the LinkedIn profile. So basically, uh, as you can see in this uh, screen, there are two different sections in the uh, top uh, search bar. One is uh, the title, the skills, and the other one is uh, the city or the country. So uh, like it's very important for you to search here, like uh, according to your uh, job uh, relevance, for example, a front end engineer or a back end engineer and uh, type in your uh, dream destination. So once you do that, for example, I, my uh, tech expertise or is on front end. So I have chosen front end developer and I chose Germany as I decided before. So as you can see here, see here, like we have a lot of different uh, like openings that are available uh, and that comes up on the top uh, pages, right? The one important thing here is like uh, there will be a hundred different uh, job openings that will be available in a particular uh, country. The one important uh, note that you have to uh, think about is like it is not that bad, that old. For example, there are few job op uh, openings that are available even like uh, three months back or uh, two months back. I would say that stick to those companies which have recently posted uh, here in the LinkedIn because uh, some companies do forget to remove the uh, openings here. So I would say like go on till uh, one month at max to apply for the different jobs that you are uh, like uh, that you feel relevant. And okay, uh, so like, yeah, we can go ahead and apply. That's very simple. But uh, like what makes you land that job? Uh, so like obviously the interview preparation. So when I decided, okay, I'm gonna find a job abroad, uh, I uh, took my time and uh, like really did a preparation for about two to three months on my tech uh, interview preparation and only went ahead and then uh, applied for all these jobs. So I would really, really recommend that you prepare really well for your job. So once you get that opportunity, you kind of uh, grab that one like very easily, right? So the first and foremost, the obvious uh, answer is tech interview preparation. And after that comes the interview request. Okay, you are done with the preparation now, like what to do next? So the interview request uh, is, I can understand that it's really hard to get an interview request, even though like you're a really very great uh, coder. And there are some uh, tips and tricks that you can uh, go about uh, to get the interview request uh, more uh, faster and easier comparatively. The, the first one being uh, like your good LinkedIn profile. And I cannot stress you enough how important it is for you to have a link, good LinkedIn profile because I can say you that there are a lot of recruiters in the LinkedIn platform looking for uh, different job openings in their own companies. So. It is very important that you have a good LinkedIn profile. So when a recruiter goes and search for, for example, a front end engineer, there are going to be thousands and thousands of different profiles that comes to their feed and they have to choose only like top hundred or so. So it is very important that you have a good LinkedIn profile and there are three different sections and uh, like that is a, uh, like a fact that a recruiter just uh, uses like, you know, a six seconds to select a candidate for the next part of the interview, right? So like there are three different sections that you can highlight yourself uh, to get the interview first. So the first being the headline and the profile, the next one, the about section, and the third one being your experiences. So the first one, is the about section. So just make sure that you have a good uh, profile picture, not like a selfie one, uh, just to be a professional one, uh, a good 
picture. Uh, it doesn't have to be like a HD one, but like a good one, a professional one. And the next comes the headlines. For example, here I have put a software engineer, the ambassador and the tech speaker, like uh, like the different things that, I, that is about myself. And the one important thing is uh, the title job designation, right? Uh, so you can be a DevOps engineer or a front end engineer or a back end engineer. Make sure that you put that uh, in the headline because uh, the LinkedIn algorithm works uh, like basically it kind of matches your uh, headline, like for example, the position and with the uh, like job searches that the recruiter do. So if a LinkedIn uh, recruiter searches for a web engineer and your headline has a web engineer, there is more chance that your profile comes on top when compared to the other candidates. So make sure that uh, your profile uh, says what you're doing correctly. And the next one being the about section. So this about section can be uh, like, you know, a, a couple of lines to a uh, para saying up in detail about what you work on. For example, here I have put in what are the different uh, industries I have worked on and what are the different uh, technologies that I have experienced on like for over the five years. And apart from my regular job, what do I do that stands out? apart from the other candidates, right? So uh, like just put in all your positive uh, points about yourself. So within that six second gap that a recruiter looks at your profile, uh, grabs that, okay, uh, he or she is something that I'm looking forward to take the, uh, them to the next interview step. So make sure that you've uh, put in all the relevant information that makes you stand out in the about section. And the next one being, the experiences so uh, like after uh, uh, going on about the headline the about section the next one um, the link uh, the recruiter looks for is your experience so uh, like you do put up all your experiences like in different uh, companies that you have had in the past years and make the one key point that i would uh, ask you to highlight over here is uh, make sure you kind of uh, put in uh, some uh, numbers or uh, some kind of uh, information uh, uh, about the projects that you have worked, some challenging projects, uh, some interesting projects that you have worked on over the past few years. So that will uh, help us, the recruiter, understand that, okay, like you have worked on, on those these projects and you might have good experience over them. So yeah, like these are the three sections that I would ask you to highlight upon. And, uh, Okay, after setting up a great profile, uh, so like these are some of the tips that I would suggest. For example, uh, like have a good uh, interview preparation time period for about two to three months and then uh, have a good profile, uh, like as I said before, and then go and uh, reach out to recruiters and referrals. Like, uh, like uh, literally I have applied for 20 to 30 companies uh, per day and got like one or two responses from them. So the ratio of getting a response back uh, to the job application is very uh, large. So uh, I cannot stress enough, like it's very important for you also to not be patient to get that response back, right? So uh, like, even if you don't get a response back, uh, feel uh, free to reach out to recruiters on LinkedIn and also get a referrals, try to get referrals from the employees that work on those companies. And uh, I say that, that the employees are also really uh, welcoming with uh, and guiding you with all the uh, like, you know, tips uh, to crack that job interview. Uh, so don't uh, feel uh, shy about like reaching out to the recruiters first and employees to get that job. So I think that's pretty much like uh, just a short uh, uh, story, like how I uh, landed a job and what all different things that I learned uh, during this uh, two to three months of uh, job preparation and landing a job outside India. And uh, it's been a really great journey. Yeah, that's pretty much what I want to share with you all. Thank you, thank you so much. Wow, thank you so much for such informative session. Like I always tell people that no matter what you know, if you don't put yourself out there, like, like you rightly said, update your profile, network with people, there's no way the job will come and meet you in the house. So thank you so much, Niveta, for telling us that again and giving us the reminder to always do that. That was an amazing session. Um, I think we should take a five minutes break now before Neveta introduces the next speaker. And while we are doing that, I would share the, we have a, our sponsor is giving us swag so you can actually apply for yours. I shared the link earlier so all participants and speakers can apply for it. If you're in the EU, I think it only covers the EU region. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, 
so 